coming up on Good Morning New Orleans. Violent crimes are trending down compared to last year, but fewer shootings are affecting more victims. We'll explain the numbers. And St. Patrick's Day Parade will roll later this month in Jefferson Parish. Find out why this year's throws will be different. You're watching Good Morning New Orleans. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Safina Chainock. I'm Tamika Lee. Five o'clock on this Wednesday hump day, March 1st. And uh, feeling like spring. Uh, yeah, <laughs> look, I don't know what's going on. I, this I'm weather? Not, yeah, I feel like uh, the sandals are a must. This yes. is about like my, I've been wearing sandals all week. It's a very confusing time of the year. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's good because we're talking about the uh, St. Patrick's Day. Day Parade. And if it continues... Uh, you might need some tank tops out there by then. I feel like I've, the last couple of years, it's been a shorts and tank top yeah. or whatever situation. I don't know. Yeah, Apparently. it looks like it's going to be the same this year, too. It's been this Got warm it. already, so I don't expect anything to be much different as we go towards St. Patrick's Day. So things are going to be staying pretty warm today and for the next several days. Right now, as you head out the door, temperatures are sitting in the low 70s. So we're staying pretty warm this morning. And of course, the humidity is still very high, so it's feeling a little sticky outside, maybe even misty at times. Across the board, temperatures are staying in the low to mid 70s along the Gulf Coast. As you head farther inland, though, we're seeing the 60s. So a surge in warm air continues to push in from the Gulf heading farther inland. So we're staying warm today, and we'll see that warm air being carried in by south wind. Right now at just around 5 to 10 miles per hour, but we could see breezy conditions picking up later on this afternoon. We'll see the warm air stick around at least one more day, but a cool down is coming this weekend. I'll time that out for you coming up. But first, let's take a quick look at traffic brought to you by Chip Forstall. Right now, things are still moving pretty smoothly across most of the area. We haven't seen traffic really pick up too much so far today. I-10 westbound from Oak Harbor to US-11, taking you about 27 minutes, and things appear to be uh, running smoothly through New Orleans East and Gentilly. Thanks, Brantley. Well, we are following breaking news this morning in Jefferson Parish. That's right. Here's a lot of look at a heavy police presence near I-10 and Causeway near Bull, uh, Causeway Boulevard right now. Debbie Gino's Zach LaBe joins us live at the scene with more. Zach. Hey, good morning, to and Seth. Yeah, that's right. We're here on South Causeway uh, right as you get off of the uh, Causeway exit. Uh, heading near the intersection of North Causeway and Galleria. Now, like you said, there is a heavy police presence here. As you can see, there is a Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office vehicle. The front of it is smashed in, and you can see the other vehicle up on that tow truck. Uh, it does look like it smashed into the side of that truck. Now, we do know that, of course, this is a deputy-involved accident. We are working on getting more information from the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office on what exactly led to this crash and the severity of those injuries. Now, we were not able to confirm uh, the severity of those injuries or uh, if these uh, the driver of either vehicle was taken to the hospital, but we are working on getting that as we uh, continue through the morning. Uh, this is, of course, blocking off this service road, but as you can possibly see, the causeway is moving for now, but we will continue getting updates and keep you up to date on our website and on air as we get more information, but for now, sending it back to you guys. Thank you, Zach, for that update. We're going to continue to follow that this morning. Also, a developing story this morning in Lafouche Parish. Thibodeau police say they have found the body of a man who jumped off of Jackson uh, Street Bridge during a police chase overnight. Police say the man was driving during the pursuit, but got out while the vehicle was still moving and jumped into the water. The man did resurface, but officers say he had trouble staying above water. He was found just after two this morning in the area of Bayou Lafouche near where he jumped in. Thibodeau police say they will release more information later today. And new this morning, a man is dead after a shooting in the West Lake Forest neighborhood in New Orleans East. NOPD says it happened just before 930 last night at the intersection of Bundy Road and Lake Forest Boulevard. When officers arrived, they found the man with multiple gunshot wounds in a vehicle. He was taken to a local hospital where he died. Any information on the shooting? Call Crime Stoppers. And so far this year, New Orleans has had more murders compared to last year. Overall shootings, though, are down, but the amount of victims is up. The Metropolitan Crime Commission President Rafael Goyeneche says as of February 26, there were 75 non-fatal shootings with 108 people shot. 
He says carjackings are down dramatically by about 40%. Armed robberies are also trending down by about 10%. But when it comes to shootings, Gwenechi explains what's driving the violent crime here in the city. So the firepower that we're seeing right now in this city uh, is something that is really unprecedented and that makes it daunting for the police to address the violent crime problem. And that is a partial explanation for the increased numbers of crimes of violence. And Gwen, as she says, the NOPD has reduced violent crime in the city with more proactive policing. The Metropolitan Crime Commission is also planning on reporting regularly on criminal court cases again. Well, the group behind the effort to recall Mayor Latoya Cantrell is back in court for a third day of hearings over the number of inactive voters in Orleans Parish. Recall organizers say there are around 25,000 inactive voters in the Secretary of State's elections database. Yesterday, lawyers from both sides left the courtroom meeting after being behind closed doors uh, with Judge Jennifer Medley. Legal expert Cliff Cardone says both sides could be possibly negotiating a deal. Perhaps there are settlement negotiations being conducted and no one wants to make any comments to the press in, in a, uh, fear that it may contaminate the uh, settlement negotiations. If inactive voters are removed, this could help the recall get the 20% of signatures necessary for a recall election. A Zoom hearing is set for 10. Recall organizers will also appear for a contempt hearing filed the time, by the Times Picayune for them failing to turn over the recall signatures. Well, covering the New Orleans City Council, members of a budget committee will discuss the details of a settlement agreement with Richard's disposal. Last month, the waste company's owner said he was having trouble hiring and keeping employees because of pay disparity between his company and other contractors. Today's meeting begins at 10 in the city council chamber. And the city of New Orleans is getting half a million dollars for the Reconnecting Claiborne project. It's part of a federal push to connect communities across the country. So the money will fund upgrades, including improvements to the I-10 overpass, repurposing the area beneath the overpass, and enhanced lighting and safety measures for pedestrians. Well, this year's Jefferson Parish St. Patrick's Day Parade will look a little different. The biggest thing is the throws. Normally, parade goers catch potatoes, lemons, and limes, but the captain of the parade says it's a safety hazard. Hmm. Every year, there are reports of injuries as well as broken car and business windows along the route. The captain says it's not just a safety issue, but also a money issue. Every year, the day after the parade, I get calls, we get calls, Nine out of ten of them, people have been hit with a potato. Carrots, Lucky Charms, Moon Pies, and beads will still be thrown, but cabbage <laughs> has to be handed to parade goers. The captain says they will reevaluate huh. next year. How will I make my food then? This is, <laughs> this is stressful. <laughs> you got to get close for the cabbage. All right. The parade is set for March 12th at noon. All right, guys, coming up, a special house committee dedicated to contouring China. Countering China held its first meeting in Washington. Here, the FBI director. And we're staying warm and humid for the next couple of days, but a big cool down on the way this weekend. I'll tell you when it hits coming up.
Stephanie Chainon and meteorologist Brooke Laser. The FBI director is speaking publicly about the claim that a lab leak in China could be to blame for the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, this comes as a House congressional meeting met to discuss the rising tensions with China. ABC's Andrew Fujii reports. A newly formed House committee dedicated to investigating potential threats from China held its highly anticipated first hearing last night. This is an existential struggle over what life will look like in the 21st century. The witnesses included Matthew Pottinger and H.R. McMaster, both experts on China who served in the Trump administration. When asked if he believes China will invade Taiwan in the next two to three years, McMaster warned of a dangerous period ahead. There's a Taiwanese election in 2024. It's not going to be good, I think, from the view of Xi Jinping. The hearing came just hours after FBI Director Christopher Wray spoke about China's role in the origin of the COVID-19 pandemic, saying COVID most likely originated from a potential lab incident. And Wray accused Beijing of interfering with the global investigation. The FBI has folks, agents, professionals, analysts, virologists, microbiologists, etc., who focus specifically on the dangers of biological threats, which include things like novel viruses like COVID, uh, and the concerns that they're in the wrong hands, some bad guys, a hostile nation state, a terrorist, a criminal. So here you're talking about a potential leak from a Chinese government controlled lab that killed millions of Americans. I will just make the observation that the Chinese government seems to me has been doing its best to try to thwart and obfuscate uh, the work here. The hearing also addressing the Chinese owned social media app TikTok, which Pottinger said poses a serious national security risk. It gives the Chinese Communist Party the ability to manipulate our social discourse, the news. A separate House committee will vote today on a bill that would give President Biden the power to ban TikTok in the U.S. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Well, this morning, weather brought to you by Belly DeBosier. Starting off on a warm note once again, we're looking at the low 70s as you head out the door and humidity, of course, staying very high. So it's feeling pretty sticky out there, a little misty at times for a few locations. And we have a lot of cloud cover as well, but that cloud cover should break up as the morning goes on. Right now, our temperature is sitting in the low to mid 70s all along the Gulf Coast. But as you head farther inland, we're looking at the 60s. Still, the southeast, generally a warm bubble in comparison to the rest of the country that's seeing pretty low temperatures after a pretty powerful winter storm just moved through. Now temperatures again sitting in the 70s now, but we're warming up later on today back into the low 80s, close to a record high. And the good news is this morning our winds have picked up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour, which might not seem like a whole lot, but it helps mix up the air enough to where we don't have that fog developing. So we're not seeing that fog this morning across the South Shore like we did the last couple of mornings, but portions of the Mississippi Sound are seeing some patchy fog. So cloudy right now will stay cloudy through the morning. Clouds start to break up though as the day goes on. That's what's going to allow us to warm up that sunshine breaking through the cloud deck later on, getting us back into the low and mid 80s. So cloud cover sticking around for now, but we'll start to see it filter out some by around lunchtime. And then this afternoon, we are going to see more sun than clouds. We do have a low chance for rain both today and tomorrow, just around 10 to 20 percent to account for isolated showers. But we're watching for Thursday night into early Friday morning. Our next cold front approaching. This is just a very thin line of showers is expected to roll through. We're really at the tail end of this system, so it's not going to pack a punch like uh, our most recent cold fronts. We're just going to see this one bring our temperatures down about five to maybe even 10 degrees and just a very thin line of showers rolling through. We could see some gusty winds developing out ahead of that system, though, so we do have a low end risk for severe weather just for that low wind threat, a level one out of five on the Storm Prediction Center scale, and this one really not bringing much rain either. We're just going to see around a tenth of an inch, maybe up to a quarter inch of rain, so not a lot of relief from the drought as we're in right now. And as the system clears out, we'll see all that moisture push off to the east as well. Cold front bringing in some drier air this weekend. So even though our temperatures are only dropping about five degrees or so, the big difference will be the humidity. As the humidity drops down and that drier air settles in, it's really going to feel a lot nicer going into Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Now with the above average temperatures and a lot of the sunshine that we've seen over the past several days, the pollen really starting to bloom. We're currently at high levels forecast to go up to very high levels on Friday 
Friday as those winds start to pick up and then we're staying at high or very high for the next five days. So pollen uh, staying elevated at least for the next week or so and probably for the next few weeks as well. Temperatures low 80s today and tomorrow close to record highs. Then we're back in the 70s over the weekend, which is still a little bit above normal for this time of the year. Then we'll see a slow warm up back into the low and mid 80s around this time next week. Now let's take a quick look at traffic brought to you by Chip Forstall, personal injury attorneys. Things still moving smoothly across the area. We haven't really seen traffic pick up too much so far, taking you about 10 minutes to get from I-510 to Claiborne on I-10 westbound and the causeway. Your usual commute right now about 23 minutes to get from the North Shore to the South Shore southbound. Tamika, Seth.
great day. You, you're the one for 2023. Find out how you can make a difference in the life of a child. And we're staying warm today, but a cool down before the weekend. I'll tell you when, coming up. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stephanie Chainock. I'm Tamika Lee. Almost 530 on this first day of March, we've been saying. Yes. And uh, it feels very spring-like. I'm, I'm curious to see what March has to offer. <laughs> I'm going to predict some more warm weather. Yes. Brantley Kite, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, the Groundhog predicted that we were going to have more winter, but it hasn't really been that way. It's been, you know, sitting in the 70s and 80s ever since. So things are staying pretty warm again today. We're looking at the low 70s right now as you head out the door, and we're not really seeing any fog developing across the area this morning like we have the past couple of mornings for southeast Louisiana. But meanwhile, portions of coastal Mississippi are dealing with dense fog. You can see that there on our Boer Beach camera over in Biloxi. Some of that sea fog coming in off of the Mississippi Sound. Temperatures staying warm through the morning, maybe a little misty at times with that fog out there, but otherwise cloudy conditions for now. Temperatures very slowly warming up because of that cloud cover preventing the sun from coming through in the morning. As we go into the afternoon, we should see that cloud deck break apart some, some more sunshine on the way later today. And that will get us back into the low and mid 80s, close to a record high again. And we'll see similar conditions.
conditions tomorrow, but a big cool down coming ahead of this weekend. I'll have more on that coming up. But first, let's take a quick look at traffic brought to you by Chip Forstall, personal injury lawyers. Right now, things are still running smoothly across the causeway, taking you about 23 minutes, your usual commute to get from the North Shore to the South Shore, moving southbound on Causeway. And as you get to the South Shore, it'll take you about eight minutes to get from there to Tropicola Street. So things across the area still running smoothly, but of course, if that changes, we'll let you know on air and online at WGNO.com. Thanks, uh, Brantley. Well, this morning we are continuing to follow breaking news in Jefferson Parish. Yes, yeah, Seth, there's a live look right now. Heavy police and presence near I-10 and Causeway Boulevard. That's where we find Zach Lobby joining us, joining us live on the scene. Zach. Hey, good morning to me again, Zeph. Yeah, that's right. We're here right off the causeway on the service road. And as you can see behind me, there is a fairly active police presence. Now, it has certainly cleared up since we first arrived here this morning. Uh, the tow trucks have actually moved away at this point. There was a tow truck that took away not only the deputy vehicle, but the vehicle that was apparently hit by the deputy. It looks like it was a head-on crash by the deputy into the side of that SUV. A uh, second tow truck did come shortly after you guys left us from our last uh, live segment with you. Uh, that took away a trailer that the SUV was towing. The tow trucks then, tow truck drivers rather, came out, cleaned up some sort of spill that was on the road, and now deputies seem to be getting back in their vehicles and possibly leaving the scene very soon. Now, we have reached out to the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office for updates. We're still waiting to hear back from them, but as soon as we do, we'll be sure to keep you up to date on air and on our website, WGNO.com. But for now, sending it back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Zach. Well, New Orleans Inspector General is trying to put a stop to sewage and water board rate increases. It released a letter Tuesday recommending the board delay any increase until it makes every effort to collect money that customers still owe. The board is pursuing a 3 to 6 percent rate hike. He's also requesting that it develop better bill accuracy first, and the board says the bill increase would be used to cover the cost of long deferred capital projects. Now, the U.S. Department of Justice is suing chemical manufacturer Dinka, hoping to force the company to reduce emissions at its facility in Laplace. The DOJ says the company is causing an increased risk of cancer for people living in the area. They say that's because the facility is emitting large <coughs> amounts of chloroprene, a dangerous carcinogen that's known as an imminent and substantial danger to public health. And economists say Social Security is on track to collapse in the next decade if no action is taken by Congress. Members of Louisiana's delegation are working on how they think it should be fixed. Senator Bill Cassidy says he's proposing a fund invested outside of treasuries to bring in revenue. Some Democrats want to lift the cap of salaries that don't have to contribute to the program. The solution is not to uh, flip the script on people that have already invested. We should be sound and responsible on how we govern. We should be sound and responsible on how we protect the full faith and credit of the United States. And economists are projecting 2034 as a year Social Security will not be able to fully cover all benefits. Without action, it would mean major cuts. The president has made statements saying he wants to see solutions soon. And kids in foster care not only need permanent homes, but they also need advocates to monitor their cases in the system. Yeah, Casa Jefferson does just that, and they could use a few dozen advocates immediately. LBJ has a story. I had to leave my home, and I never knew where I was going next. So a Casa advocate goes out into the children's home that they're appointed to and investigate the um, child's home, their well-being in school, and they make recommendations to the court based off of uh, permanency and best interests. Wendy McGee, the executive director of the Court Appointed Special Advocates, or CASA Jefferson, explaining the role of said advocates for children. And while the organization serves dozens of kids in the parish, the need is still substantial. Currently we have uh, 76 kids being served by 51 volunteers, and we have another 41 kids waiting for a volunteer. Because of what happened at home, they think it's their fault, and it's not their fault. Margaret Ether is the advocate recruiter, and she says that the organization also provides resources to help the children. People donate new clothing for our children, 
and birthdays. We come in, we'll get something out here for a child's birthday. We'll go on the shelf and get something. We have books that was donated from Barnes and Nobles for our children. And it's all about making children feel that they're useful, that they are somebody. Ether is appealing to grown-ups in the area to advocate for the children. Somebody made a difference in your life. You and the cameraman and everybody out there who are professionals. So make a difference in a child's life so they can have the opportunities you have to be successful in the community. For Moving New Orleans Forward, I'm LBJ, WGNO News. And if you want to become an advocate, you can apply online at casajefferson.org. A full background check is done to ensure the safety of the kids. Coming up for the fifth time this year, planes have a close call at a U.S. airport. We'll tell you about the latest near collision and how the FAA is responding. And we're close to a record high once again today. I'll tell you how long the warm air sticks around and when we could cool down coming up. Tamika Lee, Stephanie Chainon, and meteorologist Brooke Laser.
Covering the world, at least 36 people are dead and 85 people injured after a passenger train carrying hundreds of people collided with a freight train in northern Greece. Hellenic Train Company says about 350 people were aboard the passenger train that departed from Athens. Officials say at one point more than 150 firefighters and 40 ambulances responded from nearby towns. Also this morning, the FAA is investigating another close call on an airport runway, this time at Boston's Logan International Airport. On Monday, air traffic control told the pilot of a Lear jet preparing to take off to wait while a JetBlue flight landed on an intersecting runway. Well, investigators say the Lear jet pilot repeated the instruction to wait back to air traffic control, but then proceeded to take off anyway. That caused the JetBlue plane to take evasive action to avoid a collision. This is the fifth close call at U.S. airports in the last two months. All right, weather now brought to you by Dudley DeBosier. Things are starting out on a warm note this morning. We're looking at temperatures sitting in the 70s across the area. So again, like we've seen the past few days, we're starting out very warm for this time of the year and the humidity is still pretty high as well. So we're looking at a lot of moisture content. We're not seeing any fog across southeast Louisiana. That's a different story, though, as you head over to coastal Mississippi. That's where our Beauvage Beach camera is. We're looking at some coastal fog there moving in from the Mississippi Sound. Now, temperatures are sitting in the 70s along the Gulf Coast 60s as you head farther inland, but this is probably the warmest area of the country right now. A pretty big winter storm moving across the country over the last couple of days, bringing so much colder air and snow to portions of the plains and the northeast. So we're sitting warm down here, though. Temperatures sitting in the 70s and over the next couple of hours, we're going to see us really gradually warming back up and we'll see the low 80s as we head into the early afternoon. So temperatures warming up some as we go into the middle of the day and we'll see us sticking with the heat as we go through the evening, staying in the low to mid 70s. Then we've seen high pressure sitting over us for the past few days, just a few clouds rolling through and we're looking at cloudy skies sticking around right now. But as we go throughout the day, we should see that cloud deck break up some so more sunshine coming through later on this afternoon. That's what's going to help us heat up and then we'll see just a low chance for rain today and tomorrow around 10 to 20 percent to account for an isolated shower or two. But overall things are staying pretty dry. We are looking at our next cold front rolling through late Thursday night into early Friday morning. Futurecast here timing it out for us showing a very thin line of showers rolling through early Friday morning between about midnight and about 5 a.m. Just again a thin line of showers. We're not really looking at much of an impact as far as severe weather goes, but we do have a low end risk for severe weather, a level one out of five on the storm prediction center scale. So overall things are on the lower end of the scale, but we could still see some gusty winds out in front of this line. And there is always that low end risk for a tornado to spin up ahead of the main line. So we'll be watching for that Thursday night into Friday morning, but we're also looking at gusty winds before that system arrives. So we could see gusts pushing around 30 to 40 miles per hour out of the south out ahead of that line. And then once that front clears, we're looking at those winds switching around to the north, bringing in some cooler and drier air. Not a lot of rain from this system, only bringing us about a tenth of an inch, maybe up to a quarter of an inch of rain. So really not a whole lot. And we're still down as far as rainfall goes year to date. We're looking at around uh, three inches for a deficit so far. So overall, we haven't really seen a lot of rain this season and this system really not helping us make up for that lack of rain as we go into the next 24 to 48 hours. So so our temperatures are high right now. Humidity is high, but this weekend much cooler, much drier air makes its way back into the area and we'll see temperatures falling from the low 80s uh, today and tomorrow back into the upper 70s Friday. Then we'll see mid 70s over the weekend. The difference is much drier air will be here, so it's going to be feeling a lot nicer over the weekend under very sunny skies. And then as we go into the early part of next week, we'll see temperatures returning to the low 80s and that's when the humidity starts to come back as well. Seth. Coming up, North Shore Humane Society is on a mission to prove that any type of dog can be a service dog.
Well, North Shore Humane Society is proving that a service dog can be any type of breed. That's right. They have a new program that handpicks current shelter dogs and matches them with disabled people, and then they are transformed into a service animal. Meet Kimber, a service dog. Last year, I fell off of a four foot ladder and split my head open. And this is Kimber's owner, Otter, a 28 year veteran of the military. Kimber was a shelter dog, but is now a certified mobility service dog that helps Otter get around after doctors told him. You have a severe or mild to severe traumatic brain injury from multiple concussions, um, multiple injuries throughout my body, chronic pain. Otter suffered a medical emergency while volunteering to dog walk at the North Shore Humane Society. That's when Kimber, formally named Teddy, came to his rescue. I got one of my um, headaches and I was disoriented and dizzy and I took a knee and this one sat right beside me like he is now. He's leaning into me and just started licking me and we sat there for a few minutes. And the rest is fate. One year, hours of training and a certification later, their bond is unbreakable comes over and then I can press to get up off of them. That helps me here no matter what I do. We take shelter dogs and give them a second chance um, and they become service dogs. It costs about thirty to fifty thousand dollars for someone to get a service dog. It actually costs the recipient only one thousand dollars so that is insane. You go from fifty thousand to a thousand for this person so um, we have our first uh, service dog that we got from our shelter Miss B. She's been a little bit of everywhere um, just to to work on going out in public with her humans. Um, and then once we have the recipient, we'll work on putting the service dog behaviors on her so she'll learn how to do those behaviors that are unique to the person she's gonna go live with. K Pro K9 helps with that, making sure the dog is ready and certified. They have dogs. We saw a need in the community that was like, hey, you know, we should really try to get some of these dogs that are already sitting here waiting for a good home into the hands of somebody that could really, really benefit. Like Otter and Kimber. Kimber honestly has changed my life. Everybody needs a, a dog to get home. <laughs> I just haven't taught him how to drive yet. Stephanie Chaynock, WGNO News. And to apply for that program, visit NorthShoreHumane.org. In today's Tech Bytes, a cybersecurity breach at Dish Network. The satellite provider says a breach knocked out its websites, call centers, and internal communications last week. Dish says it's still determining if customers' personal information was compromised. Next, Twitter's crackdown on violent speech. The company's new policy prohibits violent threats and incitement of violence. Accounts violating the policy will be suspended. Less severe violations will require users to delete content before accessing their account again. Google just rolled out a new safety feature to its Pixel Watch, similar to what's on the Apple Watch. It will call for help after sensing a hard fall. Once the fall detection kicks in, the watch will first ask if the owner needs help and then call 911 and share the location if the user doesn't respond. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day.
Weather now brought to you by Dudley DeBosier. Starting out warm and humid again today. We're looking at temperatures in the low 70s across the Gulf Coast, so we're staying way above average. And of course, the humidity staying high once again. Pretty similar scene across most of southeast Louisiana and south Mississippi. We do have a little bit of fog developing over around coastal Mississippi where winds are calm on the Mississippi Sound. But otherwise, cloud cover sticking around this morning and temperatures staying in the low 70s. As we get through the rest of the morning, we should see the cloud deck start to break up some so we'll be mostly cloudy by lunchtime and then this afternoon partly cloudy with more sun coming through. That's when we get back into the low 80s. So close to a record high once again, We're looking at a high between about 82 and about 84 degrees. Our record for today, 84 set back in 2018. So we'll be very close to that once again and we'll stay warm again tomorrow. But as we go through the next few days, a cool down on the way. We'll be back in the 70s on Friday, Saturday and Sunday after a weak cold front passes through Thursday night into early Friday morning. Now let's take a quick look at traffic brought to you by Chip Forstall, personal injury attorneys. Things are staying pretty smooth across the area. We haven't seen anything really pop up so far, taking you your usual commute across I-10 westbound, taking you about 27 minutes to get from Oak Harbor to US-11 and still moving smoothly through New Orleans East and Gentilly. Goodbye, February. Hello, March. Wow, I can't believe Mardi Gras <laughs> is really far gone now. Far gone. That was just literally a okay. week and two days ago. You're right, you're right. But it's like it's like night it feels and day. Like it's like where are you? It's like dog years. Yes, exactly. You go so hard, then it's March. I know. It's a quick flip switch for sure. From well, Mardi Gras was happened to be at the almost at the end of the month, and then here mm -hmm. we are with March. Mm -hmm. March came pretty quick, and I. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like, like January took by. forever yes. and then February just kind of flew by. Yeah. yeah, March is interesting though. You know, it has following a Mardi Gras month, you know, it's it's hard to follow that, but we do have St. Patrick's Day Parade yes. to look forward to and that's always a good time. Yeah. Um, when I was actually at Mardi Gras, the woman next to me was telling me a funny story because I got hit in the face, of course, with a throat. Yeah. Totally fine. And I'm just like, like, don't worry, it's yeah. okay. Uh, I got hit in the face with a cabbage once uh -huh. at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh -huh. So be careful once you head out there, March 12th. I know, yes, down Metairie Road. It's mm -hmm. all in my hood over there. So <laughs> I like it. I could just walk around. I love March. March is like, I always say March and October in the city are good wedding mm -hmm. months to get oh. married. Yeah, yeah I, it's I mean, comfortable out. It's comfortable out. The weather's perfect. March is when I start walking all over the place. So I like I like March. Lucky March is, mom. Yeah, March is like springtime, and it's just it, it's it's a good time. Everyone's I, coming back to life. Yes, mm -hmm. I have a little vacation scheduled in March. So oh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, yeah. so that's why. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I do, we do this every year. You know, my friends and I. Anyway, that's a whole other story. But yes, <laughs> looking forward to March. I love March, and um, yeah, it's 31 days, right? Mm -hmm. In March? Something so like did that. you know the whole knuckle thing? I never knew this. What is this? Because no, I feel like Colleen knows I, I, this. I can't do it. What is this? What's the knuckle? It's taller knuckles with 31. It's taller knuckles with 31. That's how you know what days have 31. Oh, gosh. I've never heard So it's like January. Uh-uh. See, no. We'll figure it out on the break. But apparently yeah. that's how you figure out what days have long. Okay. Okay. Well, if All you're right. going back to work, it's March 1st. Don't forget <laughs> to put that on your papers. And First of the month. Too. All right, guys. We'll be back at 6 o'clock hour.